So I finally got my hands on a Synology NAS with a processor powerful enough to allow the Plex transcoder to work. The big question is, how useful can it be? Just in case you missed it, I have already tested a Synology NAS to see how well it performed without a transcoder. You can check out that video here if you'd like. But today, I'm gonna find out how much use I can get out of a Synology NAS that actually has enough power to use the Plex transcoder. To explain this just a little bit, I should tell you that not all pre-built network attached storage devices have strong enough processors to even allow the transcoder to be enabled. So, as you saw in my previous video where I tested the DS416, I was only able to use direct play. The best way to find a NAS that has the ability to use the transcoder built into Plex is to visit the Community Built Compatibility Chart. In it, you will find an extensive list showing a variety of NAS devices and what their abilities are. You can check out a link to that list in the description. Being able to direct play media files is fine and everything if you only use your Plex media server in-house and you don't need anything transcoded. But of course, if you wanna watch your high quality movies or TV shows somewhere else and you don't have the bandwidth to stream it at full quality, that's where the transcoder comes into play. So thanks to Synology yet again for sending me another NAS to test out. This time I went with the DS415 Plus that has a more powerful CPU and allows the transcoder to be enabled. It holds the same amount of four drives as the DS416, but because of the additional power, it does cost just a little more. Let's talk about my testing though. I wanted to see how well it would perform while using the transcoder. So to do this, I loaded up two different movies. One with a resolution of 1080p and a bitrate right around 20 megabits per second. For the other, I picked out a 720p video with a bitrate of only 6 megabits per second. What I found was actually a little surprising. I expected to be able to play maybe one video at a time at best, and I almost thought it would have had to been a 720p video and not the 1080. But during my testing, I was able to transcode the 1080p video to any device in my house at any quality that I chose. When I was changing the quality to something really low, like 320 kilobits per second, for example, it did take a little bit to catch up. But once I got it playing, I didn't have any kind of stuttering. I felt like I needed to test it out at this quality because, well, if somebody wanted to stream movies or TV shows to a phone or tablet, they might not have the bandwidth to go much higher. To expand on my testing, I kept the transcode quality to about half of the original bitrate and played it on my Xbox One. Then I tried to play the same file, transcoded the same way on my iPad Pro. And even though I was able to get both of them to play, I did start running into issues with stuttering. But to see if there was any way to get two streams to transcode at the same time, I tried to play the 1080 and the 720 video at half their bit rates. With that change, I was actually able to smoothly play both videos. However, there was a small amount of initial stuttering that lasted for right around 30 seconds. After that, it played smooth. After I did my main test, I did a few others to kind of get a full picture of the NASA's abilities. For example, I transcoded a 1080p stream and direct played three others without a problem. But transcoding a 1080 and a 720 while direct playing two more did cause some issues. So what did I learn from all of this? Well, as it turns out, with the right NAS, you can enjoy your media outside of your home. It will have some limitations and it's not gonna perform like a dedicated Plex media server would. But if your needs only include the use of one stream at a time, maybe two with the right quality files, this could actually be useful. Take a situation like this. You have two, maybe three Plex clients inside your house and a tablet that you take with you to work. From the results I found, you could enjoy a transcoded TV show while on your lunch break with every client at home directly streaming high quality movies. And really, for the average person, this could actually be good enough to serve somebody's needs. I mean, not everyone is gonna be sharing their library with friends or family members, so building out an overpowered media server, albeit fun, might not be required. The point is that you have to plan out your needs and find a solution that works for you. Do some research on the internet and find out what others have done and what issues they might have had with their setup. And remember, you can squeeze out just a little bit more performance out of your NAS by using the built-in optimizer in Plex to lower the quality of your videos. Today, I tested out the Synology DS415 Plus, which proved to be a very capable device. That does not mean, though, that every Synology NAS out there will perform the same. Just like I covered with the DS416, you won't always be able to use the transcoder. So what I recommend is this. Refer to the compatibility list first before you make any kind of purchase. Make sure that you don't get stuck with a device that will not be able to serve your needs, specifically the ones that cannot use the transcoder at all. 
And thanks again to Synology for allowing me to perform these kinds of tests. It's partnerships like these that help inform potential customers of product abilities, and I appreciate the opportunity to do them. You can follow me on Twitter at underscore bite my bits, like and subscribe below, and thank you for watching.